There's a lot of casual misusage of the term SUV when what's really meant is crossover. I'm guilty of it myself, it's really easy to do, but whenever I get a chance to spend a week or two with something like this, I'm reminded of how very different they are and I resolve to do better. This is the 2024 Toyota Sequoia, and it's a true SUV because it's body on frame, just like a pickup truck, whereas a crossover would have unibody construction. Now you might be looking at something like the Sequoia if you need three rows, or if you need notable towing power, or if you just really want the feel of a pickup truck with extra interior space. This delivers on all three counts, and we're gonna dive in in just a minute, but first, please subscribe to this channel, and quick reminder that you can read more about and shop for this and any of its competitors over at cargurus.com. The Sequoia was redesigned just last year for 2023, following the 2022 Tundra redesign. It looks strong and muscular, but to be honest, from the side, I also feel like it looks a little bit dated. Now, that might be partly the fault of the celestial silver color, plus all the chrome that we have on the capstone trim, which is what we're working with today. Maybe if this were presented in solar orange or lunar rock gray, it might look a little bit more modern to me. Certainly the Tundra does, and this does share some design cues with that in addition to the platform. Now, all things considered, however, I still think it's good looking and it certainly has presence. This is cool. We've got this button right here that releases that rear window so you can flip it up. And then most trims have the hands-free power lift gate, so we'll give that a second to open. Now, with the rear seats in place, as far back as they can go, which they are right now, you only get 11.5 cubic feet of cargo space. I can slide these forward. If they're both forward, that's gonna expand it to 22.3. Or if we fold these down, there's a button over here, that's gonna bring us up to 49 cubic feet of cargo space. But you are not going to get a flat load floor because these seats are right on top of the battery pack. So this does not pass my father-in-law's plywood test. Now, as I go around to the front, I'm gonna try not to get hit in the shins with the power running boards because that's happened to me a couple of times. Seated right here, I can easily imagine that I'm in the Tundra. It's got the same blocky shifter, the same geometric dash layout, and this very familiar Toyota center console. There are just a few things that I'd really like to point out here. For one thing, the Sequoia has standard tri-zone climate control, and I really like that these temperature controls are bi-directional. You don't get that in every vehicle. Now the 2024 Sequoia also has standard heated front seats, and then the heated steering wheel and front seat ventilation come on every trim but the base one. Platinum and capstone trims even get heated and ventilated second row seats. So let's go check out those second row accommodations. We've got dedicated climate controls as well as USB ports down there. So that's nice for the second row. What's not so nice is this little armrest. I don't like how it feels kind of mismatched between that and what I've got to lean on on the door. Different sizes, different depths. I also don't like how flat and wide these seats are. It feels like there's no bolstering to hold me in. Like I can just slide all the way back and forth. Obviously my seatbelt will help a little bit, but that's all that I've got. Now these do not move forward and back, which is fine if I'm sitting here. Maybe not so good though if I'm sitting in the third row. It's definitely the most cramped back here, partly because these seats are right on top of the battery pack, so we're closer to the ceiling than we would be anywhere else, and even I am feeling the tightness on the headroom, which is not normal for me. Now, you can recline these seats and get a little further from the ceiling, but if you're tall and you have to sit in the third row, you're gonna wanna be in this middle seat so that you can kinda stretch your feet out a little bit, just don't kick anybody's drink there. Now, obviously, the best seat in the house is still gonna be the driver's seat, where you can ignore the peanut gallery completely and feel like you're driving a truck if that's what you want to do. So I'm going to head back up there and this is going to make that really easy for me. Back in my truck seat. I love it. And it really does feel like I'm driving a truck, which of course, fundamentally I am. Now, some of that is because of the noise, almost like a school bus. You hear the engine pretty much constantly, but I mean that in a good way. School bus sounds like an unflattering comparison, but trust me, it's positive. I'm not getting a lot of wind and road and tire noise, pretty much none. I'm just hearing the engine constantly and it's a really nice, pleasant rumble even though this no longer has the V8. So I really like that. As of last year, the single powertrain option is Toyota's iForce Max, which is a twin turbo V6 hybrid setup also found in the Tundra. 
It makes 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque, and even with that battery pack for the hybrid powertrain, they've managed to keep the weight of the Sequoia about the same as the outgoing one, so that extra power, it's an extra 56 horsepower and 182 pound-feet of torque, that is all gravy. It just makes this one faster than the old one. Part-time four-wheel drive is standard for the TRD Pro trim and available for every other trim. And it comes with a selector down here where I can switch it into two-wheel drive or four high or four low. Now, this is rated for 20 miles per gallon combined with four-wheel drive, which really goes to show how impactful the switch to the V6 hybrid has been because the old one was rated for 14 miles per gallon combined with four-wheel drive. So this is obviously a very big difference. The trip computer says that I've been getting 12.8 miles per gallon. I don't think I have that much of a lead foot, but I have been spending a lot of time in Boston traffic lately, so I'm gonna go ahead and blame it on that. And at least the Sequoia takes regular fuel. The switch to the V6 hybrid also dramatically boosted towing capacity from 7,400 pounds to a maximum of 9,520. If you are somebody who's going to be towing with this, then you might want to know about relevant options like the tow technology package or these special towing mirrors. This is a $290 option and I can see how it would be really useful if you have a boat or a trailer behind you. As someone who owns neither of those things, I would not get them. I'm entering a rotary right now and they really kind of serve to block a lot of my vision of who's coming from the left, making it very tricky. So personally, I would not opt for these, but you're not stuck with them. They do have this power extending feature buttons down here. So when I think about it, I can kind of use that to get them out of my way or move them back and forth, but I don't always think about that. So for me, that's mostly just been a neat party trick to show up to people when I'm parked. Again, if you actually tow, or if you're someone who's tall enough to see over these mirrors, it might be a very different story for you. The 10-speed automatic transmission shifts smoothly and at appropriate times, so it's pretty imperceptible working in the background, which is you know, exactly what you want. I have read that the ride quality is better in other trims. None of the other ones have the 22-inch wheels that this does. Everything else has 18 or 20s, so my understanding is it can be better, but that said, I haven't really had the complaints with this that some of my fellow auto journalists have. I've thought that it's fine. Likewise, handling is adequate. Steering is light and definitely slow, meaning that you're making more complete circles in order to make a turn or a U-turn than you would in some other vehicles. Hasn't really bothered me. Brakes are inconsistent. They can be a little bit squishy and if you're at a stop and you're keeping your foot on the brake, you sometimes feel it feeding back a little bit, which I believe is due to the regen system. This huge touchscreen, which is 14 inches, this is standard on all but the base trip. Now, it probably looks familiar. We've seen it in other Toyotas. And in fact, if you watched my first drive of the new Tacoma, then you saw me talking about how I had no objections to it, but my videographer colleague, Elliot, felt that it was just too big and not making good use of the space. Both of those things are still true. I will now concede that having all of this flat expanse here does create quite a lot of glare when the sun is at certain angles. But we want to hear from you. Do you like that they've just blown everything up here? Or would you rather see this space used to fit more menu items in at once? Let us know in the comments. Now, even if you get the SR5, the base trim, which is the only one that comes with the eight inch touchscreen, you're still gonna get standard wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You're also going to get the same driver information display that I have here in this top trim. It's 12.3 inches, it's fully digital, nice bright colors, really easy to read and use. I will say it's kind of funny seeing zero RPMs on your tack when you're in EV mode. So that's a little bit weird. Another really nice standard feature is the panoramic view monitor. That comes with the base trim, so you do not have to upgrade. It can be yours for a mere $60,000. And it's really handy because in spite of the somewhat limited space, especially as we get further back, this is a pretty big vehicle. It's actually three inches longer than the old Sequoia. So it's really nice to have that surround view monitor when you're parking. I don't have to worry about the fact that I can't see the end of the hood from here. That's something that normally makes me pretty anxious, but I can just press this button right here and 
now I can see everything I need to to park. Now, if you're eyeing this top trim, you're also gonna wanna know that it comes with a 10 inch head up display that's available on other trims as well. And we have the 14 speaker JBL premium audio system. There is not a single extra cost safety feature on the 2024 Sequoia. It's all standard. So every single one gets the Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 suite of features. That's gonna include safety features like a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert with steering assist. It's also going to include driver assistance features like adaptive cruise control and road sign recognition. Now, every 2024 Sequoia beyond that, beyond TSS 2.5, also gets features like blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. In addition to that, it comes with the trailer merge control. So that's gonna extend the area of your blind spot monitoring to keep an eye on your trailer as well. If it detects that you have one connected, you also get front and rear parking sensors with automatic braking. Now, there is one feature that I would characterize as driver assistance that's not standard, and that is the tow technology package. It's available on SR5 and limited trims and it's standard on the higher three. So that gives you a digital rear view mirror so you can see behind whatever it is that you're towing, plus a trailer backup guide on your camera view with straight path assist. That actually is going to take over the steering so you can take your hands off and it will make all of the adjustments to help you back it all up in a straight line. The vehicle we've seen today stickers for $84,050 all told, so that's with optional equipment and destination charges. The base price for the capstone trim with four-wheel drive is $81,265, but the base price for the 2024 Sequoia in general is $61,275. And that brings a lot of standard value. I mean, you're getting the same powertrain that we've seen today, all the same interior space, same safety features, and you're actually getting more towing capacity from the base Sequoia than you would in the capstone trim. So for function, that 60 grand really packs a punch. Now, if what you're really looking for is three rows of seating and cargo capacity, then let's face it, you might be happier with something like a minivan. So let's consider for a moment the Toyota Sienna. That ranges in base MSRP from about $37,000 to $53,000, so less than your starting price for the Sequoia, and it gives you nearly 10 more inches of third row legroom, plus about two extra inches of headroom in the way back and one extra in the other two. If you really want the Sequoia and your partner is pushing for the Sienna and you're kind of right in the middle of that negotiation, do everything in your power to prevent them from looking up the cargo stats because it's not gonna be good for you. Now that's if seating and cargo capacity are your priorities. If what you're looking for is towing or off-road ability, then this is much more compelling because no minivan is going to be able to do what the Sequoia can do. And in fact, this has better towing than rivals from Ford, Chevy, and GMC, and it's the only hybrid in the bunch. Now, if you really need the most towing capacity you can get out of this, you're gonna want the SR5 trim in two-wheel drive. And remember, even though that's the base trim, Toyota really made the extra cost options here nice to have, true extras. So it's not gonna feel like a sacrifice to drive the SR5. Before we wrap up, I wanna say a big thank you to the Lars Anderson Auto Museum for letting us film on this beautiful property in Brookline, Massachusetts. The museum is home to America's oldest car collection. I personally am a really big fan. I love this place. I very much recommend that if you're nearby, you check it out. Now, you can look up the Toyota Sequoia, all of its competitors, at cargurus.com, check out our other videos, and of course, when you're ready, you can shop for a great deal on Cargurus. Just please subscribe to this channel before you go.